بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The deception of COVID or is there a bigger deception is 2020 a year where we call it 50-50 or 100-100 Is it a year where, as a believer, as the people of Iman, I've taken lesson? And my life has changed according to the Awamir Allah and the Sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or is it still 50-50, half-half? The catastrophe, the magnitude of what has been witnessed on a global scale to this extent has never been witnessed in history illa mashallah allahu alam bis sawab so either it's a change for me for 100 percent i'm still 50 50 sibrat allah wa man ahsanu min allahi sibra are we 100 percent immersed in the day the color of Allah, like our Christians immerse the child and baptize the child, is the color of Allah, the amal of Allah, the sunnah of the Nabi of Allah. Am I so colored with Allah? Am I so colored with deen? Am I so colored with akhirat? Then it is clearly visible that it is clearly visible. It is apparent, it is vivid. There's no doubt about it. Or has this been a moment which we call the moment of deception where I should have gotten closer to Allah but I didn't? Are you such people that you bring Iman, you practice on certain deen, when it suits you and you disobey Allah when you when it suits you Fama Jazau May Yafalu Dali Kaminkum Illa Khizyun Fil Hayati Dunya those who decide that Deen is based on our ambition and needs. When I think so it's appropriate to practice our practice, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says forget akhirat we will even disgrace them in dunya these are the people of iman who have been promised honor and respect but their destiny will be disgrace wa yawm al qiyamati yuradduna ila ashadd al adab and in akhirat there's a severe a more catastrophic event to follow وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ So carry your disobedience, continue. Think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blind of your actions. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ Don't be consoled. When the time is right, we will send what you deserve. So we need to be checking ourselves all the time, introspecting. And not trumming deen. They say a person, it was E time and he had a new trouser sewed. And when he tried it on on the night and the eve of Eid, he found it was too long. So first he went to his wife, she said, hey, you know what, tomorrow's Eid, got preparations. Then he went to his sister, tomorrow Eid, preparations. Went to the mother, Eid, preparations. So he was disappointed, went to go sleep. So. The wife realized, she, my poor husband came to ask me tomorrow's Eid, let me surprise him. So she went and trimmed the trouser. The sister remembered late, hey, you know what, my brother asked me, let me make his ikram for Eid. So she went and trimmed the trouser. And the mother remembered, and she went and she trimmed the trouser. And in the morning, mashallah, for Eid Salat, he had a bermuda. There's no trouser left. So it should not be we trimming deen when it suits us. Four blind people decided the circus is in town, let's go s check and we've heard of elephants, let's try to get some uh, exposure to an elephant. 
The first blind man, when he touched the back, the second, the feet, the third, the trunk, and the fourth, the tusk. So when he came back to the village, the villagers asked him, just cry for us an elephant. So the person who touched the back said, elephants are like tables. The one who touched the feet said, the legs, uh, they are like barks of tree. The one who touched the trunk says an elephant is like a rope. The one who touched the tusk said an elephant is like a pole. So each one gave their op own opinion of what they thought so. Nowadays everybody is giving their own opinion of what they think so is deen. So the ideal is 100% on deen, there's a short full, I'm restless. Allah forgive us today, we're not even 1% on deen and we're not restless. Sahaba were 100% on deen and they were restless perpetually. Today we're not even on 1% of deen and we sleep comfortably. The white of Anas in Bukhari, innakum lata'amaluna amalan yadaqu fi a'yunikum min ash-sha'ar you people are doing such amal. It is so insignificant in your eyes, so minute, like a strand of hair. It's nothing. Meaning, you think so, you consider it light, you consider it small, you consider it insignificant. Walakin, but actually, what's the story? على أهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعدها من المبيقات وكما قال in the era of Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام we considered it destruction we considered it this devastation so forget the umumi majma the general masses even the religious get caught somebody says uh, I'm watching news doesn't it start with music isn't there images whether it's the news story whether it's the presenter, isn't there women who are exposed? Isn't there advertisements which have music? Aren't we wasting our valuable time? People are watching movies. Television is only about intimacy and violence. My daily life is the sunnah of Satin and the Khan important. Every sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu salam is important. In al mu'min yara dhunubahu kannahu qaid tahta jabal A believer, when iman is strong, he considers an error, a guna, a sin, evil, as if he's sitting below a mountain, yakhafu a yaka'af alayhi, and he's worried, he's concerned that this mountain will fall and crush me. Wa inna al fajira yara dhunubahu and a fajir, a transgressor, a person who doesn't have akhirat in front of him, a person who doesn't have the awareness and the concern and the worry for akhirat, then he considers it like a fly that sat on his nose and it flies away. So guna upon guna, and he's not restless. And the pious servants, good upon good, and they're still restless. So the criteria, Allah in His Rasul, wa in akthara man fil ard. If you're going to go by what the norm is, what the fashion is, what the style is, what's trending, you're going to go by the likes, that will take you away from Allah. So all the signs of Allah in front of us, the entire occurrence of COVID should have been so great of an experience and a lesson, it should have motivated us in the direction of Allah. A person who's trapped in a cave underground, knowing that his oxygen will run out, his food will run out, his supplies will run out. Knows he has limited time to escape, to find the light at the end of the tunnel. How much time do I have? 
So, people of the dunya will plot. Batil will plot. Evil will plot. The people of Haqqa are one step ahead. Even their planning is, is not accurate. It's, 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 it's restricted. It's limited. It's, it's insignificant. It's filled with deficiencies. It's, it's fully, it's defective. Whether we call it the Chinese virus that was laboratory engineered, whether we want to blame governments for inadequate planning, inadequate strategies, whether it's the medical institutes, the medical profession for their inefficiencies. Allah Jalla Jalalu has allowed it to happen. Either we blame the creation or we blame ourselves and we check and we introspect that the people of Iman in any situation they turn to Allah. They revert to Amal. And if we think so, this devastation was serious, then when Allah takes over, sometimes when a child needs to be taken to task, you hit them softly or you test them before you punish them. They did a crime. They did wrong, you know about it. You call them up and you want to see if they're truthful or they lie and try to get away with it. The child that is honest comes clean. I did this, I made a mistake. Mouth, please forgive me. The parent overlooks that child. But the child that lies more, he'll get a bigger beating. So we have to be more concerned not of the planning of battle. But is the amal of the ummah, is my amal affecting the halat and conditions? Inna lamma taghal ma. When the azab of Allah came, then the water went out of control. Sayyid ibn Jubair explaining this ayah says that every drop of water that descended from the heavens, illa bi il mil khazan. There's an angel, there's a farishta who's been deputed in charge of that. But when Haythu Tughal Ma, when the water went out of the control, Fa innahu qad ghadiba li ghadabillah. Now the situation has moved on to the next level. Fakharaja. Ma la ya'lamun, ma huwa, that even the angel, now Allah says, in the modern world when somebody has a grudge with somebody and you find it in, in, in the evil circles where people send their henchmen to take him to task. But this person, it's something so bad that the leader of the mob, he tells all his henchmen move one side. This person, I'm going to take him out myself in the dunya, in a, in a school situation, in a madrasa situation, the teacher normally punishes. Can you imagine where the principal gets involved and he tells the teachers, the student here, I don't want you people to punish him. I am going to take him to task myself. Taghal ma is when Allah push, taken the farishtas one side, you people move out of the way. Now when azab comes, you will see how we will treat him. So we've, 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 we've donned mask. Are these masks the masks of deception? Are we living still in the deception? The virus of Bedini, the virus of wrong yaqeen, the virus of not finding Allah, the virus of abandoning the Quran, the virus of leaving the masajid, the places of worship, abandoning salah. Many searching for a solution. We searching for a vaccine. On earth, if we search for a vaccine in the Asman. So, tests have been done. The best minds money can buy is looking for a vaccine. 
How come the people of Iman are not looking for vaccine in the Asman? What amal should we be doing? With Allah's father, the survival guide was completed with Allah's permission. The amal of Nubuwa at this point in time, what is the command of Allah? Then there's a second wave. And they say in second wave is more decisive, more dangerous than the first wave. What if Allah wants to take matters in His own hands? We think so. We've seen difficulties, we've seen hardships. The, the lockdown was like a holiday. We got our food, what we needed, we had water, we had electricity, we in the company of our friends and family, we had communication models, all the amenities and luxuries, we had it. And the greatest luxury was free time. The greatest luxury in lockdown was to have free time to obey Allah. So we were, we were blessed in a sense that it was a great opportunity and if we had to consider it a chastisement then there's not a fraction, we cannot, we cannot comprehend. Yesterday we met somebody, he said he, he, he partook in his, in his village there was a flood that firstly the dam wall filled and then when they planned to open the straits it rained heavily it rained so much that the dam wall was according to the engineers going to burst going to shatter so the military had to come in to blast one of the straits so that the entire wall now they were warned already people were warned that when this strait opens water is going to come and is going to wipe out certain areas if the damn wall would have happened that devastation could not that could not be comprehended so he said the only hope we had was to go on the roof of our houses and as the water came, it wiped out everything and the water levels raised and raised and raised. And as it got closer and closer, we got more worried and worried. And he said, many people, we seen their houses, they were standing, those that were on the ground were wiped out. Those that were on their houses also, the houses collapsed, the roofs collapsed. They were on the lower levels, we were fortunate in the higher levels. So we seen the lower level people dying in front of our eyes. We got ready for death ourselves. And then the water level stopped. But this happened for three days. No food, no water, no medication, in the heat of the sun, in, in, amongst all this difficulty, amongst all this hardship, amongst this calamity, and after seeing death, we got ready for death. And uh, we were elated when we seen the military hospitals come in and they were dropping food. But they had to drop the food and half of the food went into the water. But we couldn't go into the water because there were snakes and other dangerous animals. So many people in, on the roofs died out of starvation died out of thirst. Then he said when the water subsided, the survivors, so we thought so we were dead, the survivors of this catastrophe now had to still survive, but everything has been destroyed. All your shops, all your roads, all your communication systems, all your animals, whatever provisions. He said worse than that was all the snakes. He said I think so more people died from the snakes and a plague bone which would grab people and you get boils on their bodies like tennis balls and their necks would become stuck and stuff and they couldn't move it. There was no medication, there was no anti-venom, 
We thought we were saved and we came again into our worst death. He said bodies were lying everywhere and the plague spread like wildfire. Those that were fortunate to survive, only Allah saved them. So if we, a person thinks so that hardships and difficulties have been gone through and a person has undergone all these hardships, then we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to turn to Amal, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and show us the straight path. The Amal for today is that Abu Thalba was asked about this ayat, Alaykum an fusakum, that it is incumbent to worry about your own life. So he said, You have asked the right person who knows about it. He asked the Nabi of Allah and he replied, Enjoin good, forbid evil. You will see the covetous person being disobeyed and desires followed. وَدُنْيَا مُؤْثَرَةً And people will give preference to dunya and every opinionated person will give his opinion proudly. I know deen, I know what's the solution, I know what's best. So enjoin good, forbid evil, فَعَلَيْكَ بِنَفْسِكَ Keep yourself and remain aloof from the masses because after that will be days of difficulty and hardships مثل القابض على الجمر like a person who's holding on to a burning coal للعامل فيهن مثل أجر خمسين رجلا a person who practices on that time when his fitness and trials and tribulations will get the reward of 50 people Sahaba inquired Ya Rasulullah أجر خمسين رجلا منا 50 people amongst us, or min whom, or 50 amongst them. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam replied, Bal ajru khamsina minkum. We will get the reward of 50 of the sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.